Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today we're going to kind of go over a really cool way to light um, an interview scene when you really don't have much to work with. So I was recently at an event where I was in a hotel room. Um, actually, we were in a hotel conference room and there was really poor lighting in there that of course, you know, would flicker on camera, cheap LED lights. And there really wasn't a whole lot I could work with. I didn't have a ton of lights, a ton of stands, different things like that. So I was very, very limited in what I had and what I could do. But what I had to do is I had to still come off with a really good looking and, you know, um, a dramatic looking interview. Now, of course, this is something that, you know, can commonly happen. You know, you're going to be in hotel rooms, whether it be working on certain things or, or doing a ton of different stuff. So what I had to do is I had to figure out a way to light a subject pleasing to the eye and to, you know, um, do it easily and cheaply, really. And, and, and that's the other key thing, too, is, um, you know, I had to do this, you know, on, on the cheap end. So let's kind of go over the camera setup first and kind of what I was running. And I'll show it. A, I have a behind the scenes photo right here. So basically, you can see this is the hotel room here. There is really nothing in this place at all. Like I said, it was all like this gray wall. Thankfully, there were these like four oars that were hung up. And this is literally the only thing in the entire place that had anything at all. So I knew um, this is an ag based company. So I knew that this kind of like outdoorsy vibe was going to work perfectly fine. So I decided, okay, I'm going to be shooting with that in the background. Um, and the first thing that I do is I immediately turned off all the lights because I knew, okay, we are not using any of the lights here at all, um, especially because I did have two lights. So um, I'm shooting this on the GH5, and I was on the 50mm 1.4 at 1.4. Um, I honestly can't remember the ISO right now, but it was at 4K and 10-bit. Uh, so you can definitely see, you know, there's some, you know, it looks really nice. There's a lot of nice colors. So anyway, what I started with is I knew that I wanted to have a dramatic key light and I wanted to have a nice backlight. So I have an aperture 120T, so it's a tungsten light. And then I also have this two foot quasar. Um, now the problem was I actually forgot an extra stand. I only had one small cheap stand and I didn't even have the quasar uh, tube holder. So I was a little bit underprepared and you know, of course I, I knew that I wanted, it was going to be interview style. So I was kind of sitting like over here. Um, I had the gentleman face me uh, a little bit off kilter from the camera, probably like 45 degree angle, which I think is a really nice look. And then what I did was I had this quasar, uh, two foot quasar, um, Quasar Science Tube, it's a 3000 Kelvin, not the uh, changeable one. This thing is only $40. Uh, with, a, with the whip, it's like 50 bucks. So, I mean, $50 key light, and as you can tell, like I think it looks really good. Um, I don't know if there's a little bit of compression, so maybe these colors don't come through as well. But I think for $50, this looks awesome. So what I did was I just clamped it on uh, lengthwise, and that way it sort of gave a nice skinny... Um, you know, a uh, line, it wasn't, you know, it almost looks like I was using a grid because the light, the quasar science tubes are very soft and they fall off. Um, you know, if I had it like lengthwise, like if I had it horizontal like this, uh, obviously this lighting would look a lot different, but because I did it vertical, it made it a little more dramatic. And I moved this probably another 10 to 15 degrees uh, to the subject's left so that it's, you know, this this portion of his face was in darkness. So this is kind of shooting into um, shadow, they can call it. Um, not as drastic. Um, and I, I sort of centered him. I did put him a little bit slightly facing with less space. I just wanted, I think it looked a little more dramatic that way and a little more exciting. And then all I did with the background is I took my 120T and I just propped it up facing right at that backdrop. I'm pretty sure it is at 100%. Uh, it might be like 80%. But I wanted it to really highlight the back of his head. So it kind of was like this nice, you know, fade to black on these edges of the frame. And, you know, right behind his head is the brightest spot. So it kind of highlights him. And again, there's no fill here. Um, you know, there's nothing... Uh, no reflectors, obviously, as you can see. It is just a quasar tube and an aperture 120T. And the coolest thing about this is, of course, the aperture light is $40. So, I mean, this is a $40 light that is the key. And yes, I did use an aperture 120T back here, which that light is a lot more expensive. 
But in reality, this could have been really any light. It was just the simple fact of this stand was not going to be heavy, uh, you know, tough enough to hold this if I wanted to bounce it. Plus, I didn't have a grid or anything with me, and I knew I wanted that dramatic look. So I knew the quasar tube was going to be best as the key, and this would have been the backlight. But in reality, you could use anything like a light panel, um, you know, even a cheap LED, as long as it doesn't flicker, I think would look perfectly fine. And then this is the final image, and I think it looks really good. And what I, I really didn't have to do a whole lot. Um, most of it was in camera with the lighting. I did add a Luttify LUT to this. Um, it was one of the teal and orange ones. Just kind of warms the skin tones up slightly and sort of gives that nice um, blue hue to these shadows, especially in his jacket, which was blue, like a navy blue. Um, but that was a very simple grade. I mean, I really just touched it up and put the LUT on to give it that sort of look. But as you can see, I think it's really important just to notice that this is an incredibly cheap and easy way that you can do an awesome interview setup in a terrible looking hotel. And even if these weren't back here, I think this would still look totally fine. Um, like I said, it does bring a little bit of visual interest. Um, and as you can see, I probably should have got that table out of the frame in the background. Uh, but it, you know, it really doesn't matter that much. Plus, some of these, uh, this table was kind of weird to move. Uh, it was super heavy. So that one kind of had to stay. Thankfully, the other tables moved. But as you can see, I think it's just a really simple way to set up a great interview setup. Um, you know, when you don't have much resources. And again, these are all very, very you know, inexpensive, uh, lights too. you know, any type of, like I said, the quasar tubes are, I totally recommend getting those. I mean, they're amazing. I'm honestly probably going to pick up, um, probably another two foot, uh, tungsten and then maybe three or four daylight balanced ones. Um, I like the two foot version because the nice thing about these two foot versions is they fit in a bag easily. Um, I can put them in like an old tripod bag or easily in a light stand bag. You can kind of see I have my little cart back there. They fit in there totally fine where the four foot quasar tubes are a lot harder to transport. Um, I've seen guys use like PVC, like really, really big, you know, diameter PVC tubes and they put foam in there and they put a bunch in there. But for me, that's kind of annoying. Uh, so I think the two foot tubes are the best way to go. And of course they're cheaper too, which is even better. Um, and Matthews does make a, uh, holder that you can put on a stand and it can hold like two or four quasar tubes. Uh, I'm probably going to get that at some point just because I find myself using these quasars so often. The only disadvantage of these quasars is they aren't a hard light source, but that's kind of where my 120T comes in, and I'm hopefully going to pick up a 300D sometime, and that'll be another hard source. But as you can see, with with one hard source back here and one soft source, um, you know, a $40 light keying this, this is a really, really great interview setup. But anyway, I hope this kind of gives you guys an idea of how you can work with a room. Um, I find this is like a great default to go to if you don't really know what you want to do for lighting or you're not really sure what you can do for lighting in the space and all that kind of stuff. I find that this is just the perfect default to go to and sort of go from there and see what happens. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to do another couple breakdowns and some of these behind the scenes shoots I did and sort of talk about my workflow, um, especially once I get these projects out and I can actually show a lot of this stuff because at the moment a lot of these I can't really – uh, give out too much information on, but I am going to do a video more about the Quasar t uh, Science Tubes, and I'm also going to do a video, I think, about the Aperture 120T, because I think I bought this light as more, I thought this was going to be like my main workhorse light, you know, something I would use on a daily basis, but I actually found that I almost use these Quasar Science Tubes more, because they're lighter, they take less energy, and generally speaking, most of the time I'm shooting some type of interview style thing. So, you know, they, you want soft light where I need more room to diffuse this light and stuff like that. So this is actually really nice because I feel like I can use it for a lot of stuff and it's a great hard source. But definitely if you're looking for a, uh, a soft light, completely I would recommend going with the Quasar Science tubes. But anyway, so that's the image. I hope you guys enjoyed this and um, we'll have some more videos coming soon. I'll see you guys soon.